Uh, channel 79, we're good. All right. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is a regular, regularly scheduled meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Darien on Wednesday, November the 20th, uh, 2019. Um, there are not a lot of people here, so I'm not going to do the normal things like please turn off your cell phone if you wouldn't mind. Oh. Um, <laughs> and uh, you're welcome to stay during deliberations. Uh, but you can't, you cannot add any additional information during that time. Once I close the hearing, it's or the yeah the hearing, we're closed. Um, so let me start with uh, the pear tree application number twenty two two thousand nineteen. The application of Neil Houck on behalf of the town of Darien Parks and Rec, uh, having to do with the pear tree uh, peach beach uh, improvements, and uh, that uh, that application has been withdrawn. So we'll wait to see what they come back with, okay? The uh, first application tonight will be calendar number 18, 2019. Uh, the application of Jim Rand on behalf of Gail Rand uh, to allow the construction of a pergola, uh, and they're requesting a variance of section 406, uh, 30 feet and low, 50 feet. And this is for property to 31 Ox Ridge Lane, Darien, Connecticut. Uh, Mr. Rand, yes. <laughs> you're up. Yes, sir. I'm not sure that. Uh, I guess I got the name. Yes, you can put that right on that easel. That's perfect. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jim Rand. Uh, as Mr. Williams has said, I'm representing my wife, Gail, who owns the house and is the applicant. Um, I don't know whether the uh, visual aids are going to help. I think you probably got it all in your, uh, in your materials already. But what we would like to do is to replace a previously existing canvas awning uh, that was on a, um, on a pipe frame, welded pipe frame. Uh, with a pergola. It's, uh, the dimensions of the pergola are exactly the same as the, um, uh, as the awning. It's exactly as wide, exactly as deep, exactly as high. Um, uh, frankly, we got uh, uh, frustrated with unreliable awning people refusing to come, refusing to make repairs, refusing to take it down. Uh, it finally wore out, and we took the frame out a short while ago, or making some uh, re repairs to the uh, uh, to the external uh, wall of the house. Um, the uh, I think really that's all I've got to say, except to uh, answer any questions that anybody may have. Okay. Um, can can. <laughs> Can you tell us the uh, hardships that exist with your property? Well, um, we're too close to the. We took. Uh, I refer to this one. I'm sorry, it's so small, but maybe you have. Yeah, we do. Okay, we have it. Yeah. Well, yeah. <clears throat> we're too close to the property line, but the house was there before the property line was there. Okay, do you happen to know when the house was built? Uh, 1927. Perfect. Thank approximately. You. Yes, good enough. Uh, and we bought it in 1979. Mm -hmm. uh, when uh, a, f a few uh, years after we bought the house, uh, a woman came to the door by the name of Lucille Smith, and she introduced herself, and she introduced her son, who was going to be or was an architect in Washington, D.C., or something like that. Uh, and she gave me, or us, a stack about that high of photographs of the house as it ev had evolved in the, at least in the 30s and the 40s. And uh, this, uh, the black and white, is the porch that we're talking about. That's 1947 when that photograph was taken. Uh, you can see that the, um, that the patio uh, was there in 1947, although the uh, the uh, awning was not. Uh, and above it, you'll see a picture of the uh, house last year. Um, the patio is the same dimensions with the exception of a little 
square piece, um, which was laid down after 1947 but before 1979. Uh, and um, you asked me a question. He asked you about the hardship. Yeah, the uh, hardship. I mean, in a sense, we don't have a hardship. I mean, uh, well, except for the fact that we're too close. The property line was put too close to the house. I understand. So that's a big hardship. Yeah. It, it, it is, and and the house was built prior to the um, zoning regulations of 1954. Chuck, was it 1954? I don't I don't know the exact date it was done, but uh, your house is non-conforming. I mean, because it's. It's a rear lot, right, Woody? Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, yeah, and, and it's a rear and lot. So it's, it's, we're looking at a rear, rear, rear lot line versus a side yard. Mm -hmm. Is that what would a side yard be if, if, if uh, the distance, the? Uh, it would be uh, thirty-five feet. Then. Thirty-five feet. <clears throat> so part of it would still be. In. Part of it would still be in, even if it were a side yard. But it's been there since you've purchased the property. When did the uh, awning go in? Uh, sometime after 1947 and sometime before 1979 because it was there yeah, when you got it when we bought the house yeah yeah okay all right so you have wetlands there too I see right on your property well, I'm not aware of any wetlands that have been formally staked there is a pond <clears throat> which was um, uh, dug with a bulldozer by Mrs. Smith's father I've got photo cards photographs of it being dug out. Um, there is a, uh, uh, a stream that goes from the property to our northeast. Uh, along, it's a property now alongside uh, Fox Run School. And um, uh, a fellow by the name of Jay Ginter, maybe 30 years ago, what? developed <laughs> Uh, some of that land, uh, and the uh, I believe it was the Planning and Zoning Commission's insistence that the stream be placed underground with big uh, uh, concrete pipes, which like culverts. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are culverts. Thank you. So there are culverts <laughs> going from the former Ginter property uh, under our lawn into our pond, which then is one of the tributaries to uh, uh, Stony Brook. I'm just looking at this this map that was attached to uh, the staff's comments. Really. Am, am I reading the map right? Then all this that would be all wetlands here. Well, the uh, map is roughly prepared from poorly drained geologic soil yeah. identifications until we learn more. So, if Mr. Rand and his family have not done an updated soil scientist report. That's just a guesstimate. It's a guess. Okay, I see. All right. Clearly, well, was some corridor of water that ended up being a pond. And then you got a pond there, and, and what, what's the regulation there? You can't you can't go more than a hundred feet. Well, Fifty feet would be the regulated area from the water body of the pond. Fifty feet. So APC would have to look at that. Fifty feet from the property line or from the house? From the pond. From the house. From the, from the house. Oh goodness! I, I'm just trying to uh, find We're a good ways away from that. I'm just trying to find a hardship for you. Actually, well, I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you have one, frankly. I mean, the, the, the way the house is constructed, where it's located, uh, the fact that the patio was already there, the fact that you've had this on in there uh, since mm -hmm. you purchased the property, and this is simply going to replace that. Uh, to me, uh, is. And the house Friendly. is built prior yeah, to zoning yeah. regulations, too. Mr. Rand, so. have you spoken with your neighbors, the Druggies, on that side of the home? Uh, um, I have uh, communicated by, in writing with all of our butters. Uh, Mr. Woodside generated a list of who the, the 100 feet or whatever the rule is, uh, and I sent letters to all of them. And I believe Mr. Woodside has a copy of the proofs of mailing. Uh, I have not received any comments from the Druggies. Uh, the only uh, comment I have is uh, from Mrs. Wagner, uh, who abuts our property on the other side, and she has no problem. Okay. And no plans to enclose it? It would be an open no, no, air no, pergola? No, okay. no. Uh, no plan to enclose it. We, yeah, we would generally do our normal stipulations, which include non-enclosure, no building over it. Uh, what else do we do, Woody? No, those are pretty standard. Yeah. Maybe not expand. There's some suggestions. All right. Yeah. Okay. I think we have a suggested uh, okay. stuff we need. Stipulation here. Yeah. That, that, would, that would work. Okay. Fine. Okay. All right. Any other questions from the board? 
That's nope. a no. Whoops. No, oh, nope. no? Okay, thank you very much, thank Mr. Rand. Have a nice evening. Appreciate your time. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, this, this hearing is now closed. Uh, does anybody in the audience have anything to say or any comment with regard to this application? And that's a no. Hearing is closed, sir. Okay. Uh, yes. It's okay. If I'm delivering that particular application. Now? You want me to do it now? now? <laughs> okay. It's a little bit out of the ordinary, but and then we can jump on to the next one, and the other two members are going to join in. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay, so hearings closed. Comments from the board. I'm good with it. I'm good. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I think that it's, it's a simple replacement. I think yeah. the hardship is the location of the property, you know, being non-conforming, pre-existing zoning. It looks like there's potentially some wetlands up in the area as well as a pond that sort of would push the house down anyway. Uh, so <clears throat> with the stipulation that's been proposed by the staff, I, I'm in favor of it as well. Okay. Which one, Mr. The stipulation? Yeah, all of them are one of them. Um, let me... Uh, all of, all of it. It's a one-story pergola shall not be enclosed by any perimeter wall materials of any kind, including awnings, insect screens, lattice, canvas, temporary plastic, etc., other than a simple minimal height open balustrade style safety railing as may be required by the building code. It shall remain as an open trellis frame overhead structure without any solid roofing materials of any kind. The one-story pergola volume shall not be enlarged horizontally or vertically in the future. So that's what I would suggest. I think that pretty much covers it for me. Uh, everybody else? Good. Good. I'll, Good. Move, I'll move to approve it with that stipulation. I'll Do I have a second? You. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. There you go. Aye. You have everything you need? Yes, sir. Okay. We're done here. Thank you very much, Mr. Ann. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to see me? He doesn't want to see me. Vic is, uh, has got to be brought in. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, you are welcome to my seat and the microphone, or I will continue myself. Why don't you continue on? All right, side. that's fine. No worries. Happy to do it. Vic, how are you doing? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second hearing tonight is calendar number 19, 2019. Uh, application of Yasek. Yasek. <laughs> Yasek. Yasek. Um, say your last name for me, please. Igoshinsky. Thank you very much. <clears throat> We've known each other for only about 20 some odd years. I still can't get it right, and I apologize for That's that. That's okay. But, uh, but Yasek of PB. Architects on behalf of Jean and um, uh, Pear. Pear. Sexy. Sexy. Sorry. Sexy. Sexy. To allow the expansion of a reconstruction south side one story former sunroom. Um, section 406 in, in lieu of um, 29 and 40 feet, in, in lieu of 40 feet, excuse me, and, and a couple others as well. I, won't, I don't need to read the whole. The whole um, application calendar but um, yes yeah, so if you would be so kind to uh, go ahead we'd also appreciate well I don't want to speak for the board I would also appreciate it if you would concentrate on the minimal adjustment necessary I believe the board has and I, again I don't speak for the board but I believe the board has a good understanding of your hardships mm -hmm. but what I'd like to hear is is a, dis a, a discussion and an ex explanation about the minimal adjustment necessary please correct Okay, good evening. My, uh, my name is Jacek Wiosinski, PB Architects. With me is uh, Jean Sexa and Per Sexa. They are the owners of the house. And so we'll, <coughs> there's no secret that we've been here before. And um, as you probably know, uh, the previous application that has been approved it has, is under litigation. It's been already two years. And so um, if the Sexa would like to you know, continue living in the house, uh, which is pretty much was uh, unlivable. And so we are doing currently a renovation under a 50% rule, which basically means that if we renovate under 50% of the structure, of the value of the structure, that we don't have to comply with the FEMA regulations. 
because the FEMA regulations would basically tell us to lift the house out of the ground and get it above the floodplain. So we're getting around uh, you know, that regulation by doing the re renovation under 50%. And that basically means only the inside work, only, only inside renovation and doing also kitchen, which is part of the plan. So um, as you know, the, um, the, the hardship, if you look at the buildable area right here, a green little strip of land that's behind the house. So no matter what you do to this house, you will need to get a variance. Uh, what happened here was uh, we, we started uh, renovating uh, what used to be a screen porch. You see some photos there showing the state of that structure. It was literally a porch that was added and extended on. It has or had uh, two two by uh, fours spanning uh, 18 over 12 feet, 12 and a half feet. And so as we got closer into renovating it and took the ceiling down and opened it up, the structure itself, we realized that it had to be repaired. And so, you know, with today's codes and the span, we needed bigger joists and so on. And it really made sense to align the floor of the, call it the kitchen now, what used to be the sunroom, with the second floor of the uh, existing house. And basically making the ceilings align. Um, we do have uh, a approval to, you know, eventually add on top of it and add a second floor. So, um, you know, that to us, it just didn't even occur that by sort of renovating and changing the shape of that roof by lifting it eight inches, that this would really trigger another application, and here we are. So in terms of the you know, minimum uh, adjustment, we think that there is really, this is the minimum that we could have done and we should have done under the circumstances. We have not changed any of the setbacks. So the numbers that you see in the notice, those are the numbers that were there. Uh, if you look at the picture, of the screen porch, of this porch, this, this is right before the renovation. Um, the proposed uh, will look the same with the exception of windows. There is a different arrangement of windows. Here you have French doors. Here you have uh, basically casement windows with some transom. The, 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 the balusters on top of uh, uh, this flat roof will go back just exactly the same way. The brickwork that you actually see from the existing structure, that will stay. So everything that we're going to do will look exactly the same, and it will be only eight inches higher. Can and I ask again, you a question? Hmm? Yes. If you get your uh, variance that's on appeal approved mm -hmm. on appeal, yep. what's your plan then? Because then you're going to have to come back for a third variance because this structure is going to be eight inches higher. No, uh, we would, no, because we, what we have already approved, which right. is under litigation, is actually adding on top of that, putting a master bedroom right, right on top of the structure. Right, but that first floor structure, I looked at the previous file, is at the existing height. So you're now going to go eight inches, you're going to go a second story above that, which is also going to be eight inches higher. No, 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 it, we actually, what, 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 what is right now constructed? in a sense, is actually ready for the second floor addition because that, those floors align. The, the plan was, or still is, from the second floor, right now, the, oh, okay, right before the renovation here, there's a French door here, you can see, right? There was a step down onto the roof of uh, this structure here, right? The new proposed bedroom, which would be right on top of this, you just walk out right into it. So rather than stepping down eight inches, you would just walk right into the master bedroom. Uh -huh. Right, but we approve. That's what you approve. Other application, and we approve you lifting the current structure. Right. So you would have still had that step down, which no longer <clears throat> exists. So you're uh, going to be eight inches higher at the top level. Well. No, because the, the, what was approved um, had actually floors lined up. We were lifting the structure, but then we were adding on top of that. 
So the <coughs> master bedroom that was proposed to be on top of the kitchen or what used to be the sunroom um, goes right on top of it and was actually aligned. There was no step down from the master bedroom. You know, it wouldn't make much sense to step down from the master bedroom down into the uh, bedroom. You know, you, be, you end up tripping and it's just eight inches. One step is very dangerous. So we always had the intention to align the floors. So your representation is that what you built matches up with what was previously approved? That's correct. Ex well, with the exception of no structure on top of it. Right? So we're not building anything else. What we're going to do at this point is only complete the interior re renovation. Put the kitchen, you know, <coughs> the kitchen cabinets are actually in storage because we, we got stopped. Um, and we cannot continue in that, with that part of the project. So all we really wanted to do was just finish this up and, and then just wait until the litigation is over. And, um, you know, once we get a res resolution, then we would know what to do next. But uh, at least this would allow us to continue this project and finish it up. So, by the way, you know, and, and there, you know, there was a question raised about the volume, you know, and the increase of volume. Um, the increase of volume is less than 1%. If you just took this, this space into consideration, okay, a 12 6 by 17, what it was before we lifted it, it was at 7.4, now the ceiling is at 8. That's an increase of less than 1% in terms of volume. And when you look at the structure, first of all, this particular part of the house, as you can see in this picture here, if you come down Beach, beach Drive, you don't see it. You have to be on the cul-de-sac mm -hmm. to actually see it. And you have to stand, actually go beyond the front door, and then turn towards the house to look at it. And again, the way it's gonna look is pretty much the way it was with the exception of extra eight inches. So it's not blocking anybody's view. Uh, certainly the neighbors right uh, adjacent, the Daleks, uh, I don't think they're going to see any kind of a difference in terms of uh, view, uh, in terms of volume. Uh, you know, it's really no different uh, than w what it was before. Yeah, there's no neighbors around at all. I mean, it's at the well, end. Well, at that end, yes. Yeah. It, it, that, well, there was a neighbor sort of across, but again, the way the house is positioned, yeah. Yeah. they're not even looking over that structure. And we do have, uh, uh, you know, several letters from the neighbors uh, that, you know, when we send the notices out, uh, we're going to submit those uh, for the record. They're in favor. We don't know of anybody... Uh, opposed, um, except for the neighbors, uh, but that, I'm sure they're going to say something about that. What happens if, if, if our decision is reversed by the court? I'm just unclear as to what would, what would be the next step for you this decision at that point for this yeah. particular application no the, the 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 decision that's currently pending well before so the court if that if, if if our decision is reversed right and well, apparently then the court says well there's not enough not enough hardship uh, or not enough evidence of minimum uh, adjustment to justify the variance that we had previously granted to you you got to go back to square one at that point it seems to me but then we have a building that's like Half built, based upon a variance that 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 may or may not survive. I mean, am I am I getting that right? Yes. Well, so we actually thought about that, of course. And so what will happen is we will just stop. The house would be uh, completed, provided that we can finish the kitchen, right? Which is what we're talking about right now. We're not going to add over the kitchen. We're not going to add over the garage, and we're not going to lift the house to get it out of the uh, flat plane. Which really is really just, I mean, that to me is just unconscious that somebody would actually object that. That, you know, you would make my clients live in a house that is going to flood because the neighbors object that. Because sorry, they I don't, don't like it. I, I, I don't follow you. Well, it's, it's right now the house, the first floor of this yeah. house is within the floodplain. 
yeah. which means that it's going to flood with a major storm, right? We cannot lift the house because that's part of the litigation. So we're, we're renovating the house right now. We're putting in a new kitchen, new floors, you know, trying to make it livable so they can actually move back. They've been actually out of the house. They don't live there anymore. And trying to make it livable. And when we finish this, hopefully there'll be no storm until we get some kind of a resolution. And if we get shut down, we would have to come back to get a variance to lift the house. I just don't understand why, but that's that. Those are the regulations. Tell us about the uh, parking issues. We just got uh, a, a staff report mm -hmm. uh, this evening when we came in, indicating mm -hmm. that uh, uh, there seems to be quite a bit of parking uh, by the contractors and the tradespeople, perhaps where it shouldn't be. Do yeah, you, well, you want to address that? I, I'm aware of that. I know there were some instances um, that um, you know. Most of the time, they, everybody parks. They actually park at the property. They do not park on the cul-de-sac. Uh, they make really a big effort. But you know, from time to time, there will be some contractor coming in, and they just park like you know whatever. And but, so, I, but I mean, isn't there somebody in charge of the job that will there say is that, a, hey, there you is can't, a yes. We have a we have a stipulation by the zoning board that says you can't park there. So park someplace else. I mean, isn't there somebody there who can enforce the stipulation that we imposed? We're really trying to do that, and we, you know, there is a, uh, a contractor, a GC, that is on the job, but sometimes he has to run to, you know, get something. And uh, at this point in time, right now, I think last time I was at the job, there were like six trucks in there, and you know, on that little tiny piece of land, it's very difficult to find a parking spot. So they were all over the place. I mean, meaning as parked as tight as possible, with with the back of the car right at the curb. And so, you know, we couldn't get any more. And, and again, that's what happens. Sometimes you get a delivery or you get something and the cars have to be moved around and so on. But, you know, we understand. I think most of the time, anytime somebody says something, they will move the car right away. And, you know, I, I'm not there all the time. Uh, the sexes are not there any, all the time. They don't live there anymore. So, you know, we're, we're trying to do the best that we can and, and police that. But from time to time, something happens, yes. We admit that. Um, there's, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. There's an engineering report from your previous application which mm -hmm. envisioned this exact type of work. So I'm a little confused as to why it's a surprise to you that you had to do this work. Well, our plan was to, uh, in, the, in the report, um, we measured the height and the depth of the joists, and we figured they're about eight inches uh, uh, thick. So we were going to sister these up with another additional joist. When we opened up the structure, what we found were two layers. And you can see that here. There were two layers of two by fours, and the second layer was actually slanted. And so um, that was a surprise. Without opening <coughs> the ceiling, we didn't know that. Uh, you, you just make, you know, I think reasonable assumption that by measuring from the bottom and to the top, that that would be the thickness of the joists. So when this plan was done, the ceiling wasn't open? No. The, not the first one. And even, even the print, uh, I mean, even the, the, the building permit uh, set for the interior renovation, what we have the permit currently under construction, um, we made the assumption that uh, the ceiling can be just sistered up and, and put back together. What we didn't know and you can also see that in these photographs here, there was a water damage. You know, all of this flushing here didn't work a long time ago. Uh, water was getting into the joist. Here is a piece of uh, one of those two by fours. I mean, look at this. This is all eaten and rotten. So I had to come out. It, it, we couldn't just use that to, you know. And again, it, it's very difficult to foresee this without really ripping the house apart. Uh, when we started to work, to, when I got hired two and a half years ago, uh, you know, the sex who were living in the house <coughs> and it was a little bit chilly, and there was no heat in some parts of it, but you know, they were there. We measured things, we checked things out, now we took it apart and we found that we needed to uh, beef up the structure. I guess, Woody, in the, in the future when we get these structural engineering reports that are supposed to help us understand what, you know, 
what, what they're actually going to be doing to the project. We need to have them, you know, open up walls because, I mean, basically they, they envision the exact project that they're doing, but now it's eight inches taller. Um, can you uh, state? <coughs> this is sorry for the, for the record. This is a David What's the date of that? David Seymour uh, report from September fifteenth, twenty seventeen. And on the first floor of Sunroom, it says the first floor, uh, the Sunroom's first floor is on is slab on grade. The new floor will be installed using nine and a quarter TJI, at least 16 inches on center. Um, I think that's the exact framing that you're using, right? Yes. And the existing ceiling is framed with two by eight floor joists, which cannot carry the load. The new floor loads and these joists will be sistered with nine and a quarter inch LVLs, most of the exterior walls and windows. Uh, additional two by four studs will need to be installed along with new windows. So I don't understand how that, I mean, you had this report, you knew you were gonna have to put in new framing. Mm -hmm. How did we end up eight inches higher than we expected to be? Well, our intention was to- If we were, yes. trying to, if we were actually trying to rebuild you know, what was there and, and stay in that 50% rule, how did we end up eight inches higher? Because when, by the time we took everything down, it really made sense to align the floors. I mean, that's the contractor's thinking, and, you know, I agreed with that without thinking that, you know, this would recover a variance because I actually thought we were covered because we already have a approval to do an addition on top of this floor that was just reconstructed. So, um, in terms of the volume and, and, and the setbacks, there isn't really no change. You know, where that floor went inside um, didn't really change anything on, on the outside. So I thought that we were covered yeah, with could, the previous application. I, I mean, Chuck, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're entitled to proceed even though it's under appeal. Oh, no, no, they can, no question about yeah. it. It's just, it's, I think, a so, risky move, but right. uh, that's, they certainly have that right. So, I mean, if you want to proceed and, and keep the, the construction that's there under your existing variance with the risk that it may get overturned, you know, we don't really even need to continue the hearing tonight. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Sure. Okay. Uh, uh, this is Paris Sexo, one of the homeowners. Um, so I, I, I appreciate sort of what you're stating. So our perspective on this is we're just asking you for this one variant such that should the appeal prevail on the court case. And we don't know how this will come down. The, the judge may actually go through and cherry pick it. We don't know what the outcome will be. So you are correct. We, we can continue working in the house under that and take the risk of whatever he decides against us, we may have to undo or come back to you and file for a new approval. We understand that part of the first application. Here, we went and pulled in a completely independent building permit, and we really thought we would not need any variances, right? We're in the existing footprint. We're not creating new living space. We're just making the house conform with building code. That's really the whole objective here. And so the reason we're asking you to consider this variance tonight is by granting us the variance for that change in the structure of the roof, it's now complying with all building code. It's to the right code, and it does align our floors, and it positions us, if we do win on the other case and it prevails, to just build on top of it. If we lose, what we're looking for is the variance to be in place so that we can just complete the interior renovations, get a CO, and move back into our house. So, yeah, but you're almost asking us to sort of prejudge this thing. Right? You're, you're asking us to step before the judge makes his ruling to make a ruling that's sort of preemptive. No, didn't he, that's not he true. just gave the two, two options difference. without or with, right? Yeah, but if, if, if you're truly doing this under the 50% renovation, then yeah. we can't grant you a variance. You but, can't grant us a variance. Right, because well. you're not replacing what's there. You're putting in a new structure. It's eight inches taller than the existing structure. Right. That's why we need a variance. That's why we need the variance. But then you're not under the 50% rule because we're, we're granting a variance for something new. You're not just replacing what's there. No, no, no. The, the, the way the 50% rule works is that as long as you renovate, 
if if you are within a flat plane, like you know, A four A A fourteen, whatever is the zone, and you have to be a certain height right. above the flat plane, right? Uh, and you have a house that's non-conforming, meaning the first floor is lower than the required flat plane, okay? You can actually renovate that house if you're not doing more than 50% of the value of the structure work. So if the structure is, you know, is, is $500,000, the value of the structure, and I do work under $250,000 construction, I can do whatever I need to do inside, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't need to lift the house. Inside? Inside, I but can do any. We're creating new new space outside. There is no new new space. That the f the floor plan <laughs> and the footprint of that porch is the same. It's really just the ceiling that we're talking about, and and we do need a variance for that because that part of the structure, or the house, is non-conforming. So that's why we need a variance for that. Yes, I think the question here is. Can you include in that fifty percent calculation? Right, so the investment in this project, the building permit, needs to be below fifty percent. Otherwise, we have to lift the house. Right of the assessed value. So what of is the assessed, assessed value, value on the about, property? It's a little less than eight hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so then you could do four hundred thousand dollars worth of work, yes. and, so and that, that's always been that. Yeah, yeah, and that that includes putting these new beams in. You know, we already we, yeah. our, our permit is actually below that number. Okay. How far below? Uh, we're at 270,000. 70,000, yeah. So we have room to make adjustments for yes. some of the sector to work. I don't understand that. Is that correct or not? I'm not sure it is, because it's the, 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 the rules specifically say renovation. So yeah. you can renovate a structure that's there. Yeah. But this is, they're going higher. Yeah. It's as if they're creating a new structure. I mean, it's only eight inches. I get, I get that it's to, it's a small amount, but it's you're it's saying the eight inches times twelve times seventeen is what's the new structure? Right. That new piece changes this entire thing for you. Okay. In my but are they in, forced in a, to do the eight inches because of the floodplain? No, 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 no they're not lifting again. Floors. Right, no. it's just. And I'm, a, I'm, I'm, con I'm not convinced by the building code. I think, what do you, you provide us something with the ceiling heights being seven foot four. Well, that's, that's true. The applicable building code is only seven feet for habitable space. Can you get him, Judy? No, he doesn't. <laughs> Here. He doesn't have to go back there. All right, I'm moving over, Chuck. Over. If, if, I think we, yeah. I think we provided in your staff stuff the applicable building code, and it, it does talk about seven feet. Not eight or whatever this is. So seven foot four inches apparently meets the current building code. That's ridiculous. So, sir, your comment about meeting building code, what exactly was that referencing? Well, what? My, my understanding was because we're preparing this kitchen to be um, you know ready to carry the weight on top of it so we needed to make sure that it could carry another floor on top of it so that was part of the whole cistern and rebuilding it mm -hmm. second if we don't get that approval now the ceiling on top is not an interior wall floor right it's exterior so we have to meet the um, insulation requirements and everything else and so by putting in the beam we get enough space to blow in the insulation to meet the right r -cap. That was my understanding. And so what? Yeah. So, so what happens is this is, and this is again, this is tricky. It, it, if if that kitchen is open to the elements, the ceiling of it. In other words, it's just a. There's no space above it. That is actually a ceiling. In that case, it has to have a R value of R49. That's that's very very high. We need thickness for it. We need a lot of thickness. And so if that floor, if we were doing this under the previous renovation or approval of uh, 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 the variance, the previous application, there wouldn't be any insulation there. This is crazy because the way this thing's just worked out. So we wouldn't even put any insulation in there. Well, we could have done what we were doing and, and built another thicker floor, but there was no insulation inside and be done with it, right? Now, because we have to finish this, uh, construction with the permit that we have, we are showing insulation R49 in there, and the ceiling height. Um, yeah, it could have been lower, but 
since we had to take it down and we couldn't sister these joists anymore, again, it just really made sense to align these floors. You know, the ceiling, the ceil it's, not, it's, not, it's not anything crazy. I mean, I thought it just eight foot, eight, foot, eight foot high ceiling. The rest of the house is eight feet. We're not asking for 10 or nine, eight feet. The, the old ceiling was seven four. We gained six inches, I mean, uh, eight inches inside. And, and the structure was falling apart. We had to be rebuilt uh, because the building code would not allow us to put it back together the way it was, you know, especially if, if this is outside external uh, ceiling uh, exposed to the elements. So with the two layers of two by fours and some even, you know, very good insulation in there, we just couldn't make it. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, yeah. just for clarification, mm -hmm. my understanding is you could have rebuilt the exact structure, structure with the seven foot four ceilings, but it didn't make sense. So you raised it to match the floor. Yes. That's the bottom line on that, this. That's correct. And that's the, and, and that's and the I, issue that changes the whole application for us, that had you rebuilt it to seven feet, four inches, this wouldn't be an issue. Right. Yes. I mean, I, listen, I mean, sure. I hear I mean, you. It makes sense. I, I get it. <clears throat> It, 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 because again, when, when the contractor called me from the job and said, listen, you know, this thing is falling apart. Can you come over and take a look? I went there. I, I, saw, I saw what was going on. I said, no, we have to take it all out. We got to put new joists in there, okay? Uh, where do you want me to put it? Well, just align it with the floors because eventually we're going to have a bedroom there and you'll be walking from uh, one part of the room into the second and why have a little step? You know, one step here, you know how many times people tripped on this? Yeah. I did That's myself. A big problem. <clears throat> it's yeah. very dangerous. So I said, no, just, just line it up. Because we have a variance to put a structure on top of it. So I thought we were all covered. And I'm sorry, you know, this is my mistake. I should have probably stopped and said, okay, well, let's just put it back together to 7 4. And if, you know, if that's the case, we'll take it down. We'll rebuild it. We'll put it at 7 4. And we don't have to talk about it. I think I, I think just to, just to make a point of clarity mm -hmm. here, I don't think your options are tear it down and put it to seven four, or um, get a variance for what it is. I mean, you've got a variance for what it is. What you've told me, you built it to the specifications of the variance that you have. Yeah. So you don't even need to be here tonight. I, I, so you know, asking us to grant a variance on top of that, you're saying, okay, we need you to find that this is the minimum adjustment necessary to grant an additional variance to a variance that you've already granted because we may or may not get that variance upheld. Right. And that puts this board in a very precarious position where we, we've seen it in the past where we've granted a variance and then the, the, the family comes back and says, well, we need three bedrooms instead of two. So we want to raise these walls. We want to raise these. And it's very hard to find the minimum adjustment necessary for a different variance when we've already granted one. Right. Um, so so I, it puts us in a really tough position and, and yes there's a hardship on the lot I think I don't think anyone would would right. debate that um, but what you've built we've already granted a variance for so you know I would keep it I, I'd, I'd get your CO I'd live in the house mm -hmm. and if you get a denial come back and see us and, 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 and deal with it at that point right well I, I, I think that absolutely uh, makes sense and, and I understand uh, where you're coming from because you, like you said it's kind of like we wanted to keep going. We didn't want to be, when we got stopped, I mean, this is exactly what happened. We were under construction. Um, we, we thought we were doing the right thing. And we get a call from, from the town saying, hey, stop. Uh, you're yeah. doing, you know, we, we have to stop. So we did. So, so that part of the house, we're, we're working on it. But, but that part of the house, we haven't touched since then. Nothing. So do, do we now we can say, look, we're just going to keep going because uh, we don't really need a variance for it, and we're going to get the CO, and maybe, hopefully, a rolling is going to be done before we finish this. Yeah. So can I, 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 I just want to be clear. This is Paris Sachs again, for the record. Um, so if I understand you correctly, we're too early. Basically, I really think right? you are. I think I think you got to wait for the judge to decide what what he's going right. to decide. And, and depending and on that outcome, we would come back to you, basically make the same presentation. But now you don't have the conflict. Correct. And you can find we obviously have a hardship, and this is not a we're not trying to build an extra bedroom mm -hmm. or anything. We're just trying to 
No, no, I, I to, yeah. totally, totally understand yeah. the application. So, I understand why uh, you brought it, but yeah. it, it just puts us in an awkward position. And we're, if we're, we want to work with the board. If trust we're pre-approving yeah. things before yeah. they actually come to fruition, then it, 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 you know, Chuck, you see this in, in litigation all the time, right? A judge won't pre-approve something. You gotta, you gotta actually have the material matter of fact in front of you, and we just don't know what the judge is going to decide. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think, I think it's you know, <clears throat> time better spent. I mean. We could grant this variance, and in, in, in I know Mr. Maslin sitting back there, and we could be on another appeal, appeal on, on, on this variance again. So, you know, yeah, we're not trying to waste anybody's time. I, I think you're just creating more work for yourself. So, should we defer or withdraw this? I would. I would. I'm not the chairman. Well, I, I well, would continue. I would continue as well. The only problem is we don't know when the judge is going to make his decision. But it's 120 but, days from when they filed, so the clock's ticking. So yeah, it will it, be within. That 120 days, and unless we can keep on the calendar and can, they, can, they can grant us we, further continuances. We, we, yes. Vic, you used to look like you want to say something. I do. I, um, if the judge approves the variance as we granted it, then they keep plans that they submitted. Yeah. Yes. They, they need to come back again. No, they no. just go then, second story. But the going. plans that they submitted have the ceiling height of seven four. No, they don't. No. I, I actually double checked them. The oh, you did I look was, at that? Yeah, the reason I was confused by that is the plans that they submitted before yeah. show the foundation being raised. Okay. So Yasik has assured me that when they yeah. raise the foundation on all of the floors, all the floors are going to go up together and they're all going to be level. Yeah. So the plans that they submitted did not do not have us in the floor. Okay. They had they had they had the, all the floors even. Or the way it was in the kitchen okay. had an eight got ceiling. All, it's well, always had that. Sure. So just to follow up on what he was getting at initially. Sure. When you do do the second story, th that bedroom is not going to be eight inches taller on the roof line. No, no, no. It, it just it's going to be, be right. Everything goes up. The Everything same. goes up oh, together. You're just, right. Yes, you're just you're just eliminating the step. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, they had all the floor levels. I, I, I did double check. They had all the floor levels. Oh, no, gotcha. Okay. okay. So we're going to continue this. So yeah, I think you okay. should. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I, anyone and, else? And I see? certainly, uh, my wife and I, we certainly yeah. understand that we we did not intend to create problems. I we think thought we had a separate permit. Mr. Deliver. And when does 120 days uh, run? Okay. Do you, do, you, do you know when it runs? When does it expire? Uh, I, uh, I should know that date. I, it was somewhere at the beginning of October. It's the last of that. The, so 120 the days from there. Things were submitted to the judge. You know, the judge can do different things, but I understand the clock is ticking. So, so the start November. date was the end of October, obviously. No, earlier in October. So sometimes uh, so Like maybe mid-October, so. What the heck am I Woody, we can continue this exactly. indefinitely, though, so long so as the applicant consents, right? Yeah, 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 at least yeah. 35 yeah. days to next yeah. month. Now. So, right, yeah. so you understand, it, it appears as though I'm going to continue this, and, right. but you also understand that if we, the Zoning Board of Appeals, runs out of its a lot of time, if you will. And we have we can ask you for a continuation, and you need to approve that. Yes. Okay. So I just want to make that clear. Absolutely. Sure. Yes. Okay. Can I ask one other question? Can I ask one other question, Woody? Yes. Has, there, has a stop order, be, work, a stop work order been issued? Oh, that's actually what I was going to say. Uh, I think we would need the zoning enforcement officer to clarify the exact status of what happened and what was determined that, would, that could proceed and what couldn't. And I'm sorry, I don't have all that information. So. We, we obviously talked with zoning enforcement officer at building. We were clearly told we could pull two permits. So that's actually what we have. We have the original one that we're before you on. And uh, I don't know, about a month ago or whatever, we pulled the other permit that's under, that has all of the zoning um, variances approved, but is subject to the court case. So we understand that as long as that's pending, we can continue working and zoning enforcement building, you know, the building permit, it's all valid, the permit's valid. And so we're building under that at this moment. And so any work in the kitchen is done under that permit. We, we understand that. And should the court case come out against us, then we also understand that that permit is invalid. We have to stop all work and we have to reapply for whatever approvals we, we require to continue. Mr. Chairman? Yep. Yikes, yes. Uh, I can't offer this much clarification. The increased height of this kitchen and the proposed roof overhang with the railing, mm -hmm. that is not approved with 
current permits mm -hmm. because the overall plan is to lift that whole end of the house and then put the railing up above the second floor. So mm -hmm. what the subject of this actual application is would not be approved unless they get it approved tonight or some other night as an additional variance. Keeping it down low, but with the overhang and the railing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I, we, we understand. So so they'd have to leave it in the, in the current box shape until this is... So another, can I rephrase my understanding? Parasites again. So my understanding is we're currently moving forward on the building permit we pulled with all the variance approvals that you granted us, that's under review. That includes the height of the kitchen, it actually includes building on top of it. We have no intention of building anything extra volume wise until we hear the court case, because that doesn't make any sense. And we're going to lift the house last. So there was some discussion of do we have to lift the house first before we do work? And, you know, the, the, the town is not telling us what's the logical order to do this total project. And so we're proceeding on that basis. So everything we're doing is covered by the permit, by uh, the variances you've already granted, until we hear from the judge on what we're allowed to do and what we're not. And we fully understand that at that juncture, the town um, would have to come back and say, if you lose the case or whatever piece of it, that part of the project would be stopped or we might have to come back and file for a new approval. Yeah. Okay. I, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, Mr. Netter is, is exactly correct. So I, I am going to move to continue this unless there are other comments uh, from the board I think we've got or, a or questions. We've got what? a bunch of people in the I, audience. I, I, well, if I continue it, I don't have to. Do I don't have to do that? I think people don't, spend, have, to, don't have to, but people spend the time. So you want out. me to do that? I okay. Uh, I will wait to make that motion until I hear from other members of the audience that have um, something to add to the application. So I will ask the audience, does anyone out there have any comments uh, relative to this application? Um, I do have two letters from my other two neighbors basically supporting our application, which I can submit. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Robert Maslin. For the record, I represent Maria Sullivan and uh, Bruce Gulick, who live next door at number 40 Beach Drive. In, in view of the fact that this looks like it's going to be continued, I'll, I'll just make a couple of comments. Please. And, and most of it's clarification of the status of things since the <coughs> last variances was, grant, or was granted. A building permit was issued for interior renovations early this year. One of the things that happened was this sunroom was dismantled in significant way and the contractor started to rebuild it and that included some floor work replacing either wall or parts of the floor. The roof and ceiling are higher and Dave Keating wrote a letter uh, fairly recently that says, said you can't use the variance that was granted in pieces. You have to do the whole thing. You can't do the sunroom under that variance unless you're actually going to lift the house. So apparently, in response, the uh, contractor, acting on behalf of the owner, obtained a building permit, a zoning and building permit, to lift the house and to build what the variance allows. So if the plan now is to proceed with work under that variance. The house has to be lifted. My concern at this point is they've already done some work on this. What happens when they do other things like they've already put dormers up on the top level? What if the judge says you can lift the house but you can't do any expansion? Which would be consistent with a recent case, the Whitman case that just came out. You may have heard about it. What's going to happen? You're going to have part of the work that was approved by the variance done, but we don't know if that part that's done is actually going to be upheld by the court. The judge has three options here. Uphold it in its entirety, dismiss the appeal. Or sustain the appeal in its entirety or something in between. 
And not to get into the briefing or the questions the judge raises, but it appears that the judge is interested <coughs> in what's this variance, what's the justification for it? What's that variance, what's the justification? In other words, looking at each individual That's aspect true. of the project. <coughs> That's true. Looking at, okay, what's the justification? Which indicates to me that the judge could be, and I'm speculating, but I've been in front of this judge enough times to know this. He may say, you can do this, but you can't do that. One of the things in the recent Whitman case that came out is the Supreme Court said certain aspects of non-conforming structures are grandfathered, but non-compliance with flood elevations is not. And if you're going to replace a floor, I would, a different context because you're building a new building, but you can't replace a non-conforming floor with another non-conforming floor. And I think that's what's going on here as well. And I, I think I heard that this floor is being raised so you don't have to step down into it. Now you're at a different elevation, but you're still not in compliance with the flood elevation. There's no request for a flood variance here. And I, I remember plenty of projects where people have put additions on and have asked for variances so that their new floor can match up with the previous non-conforming floor elevation under the flood regs. Uh, so there's, there's more to this than just simply saying, go under the existing variance and hope someday you get approved by the court or upheld by the court and lift the whole house. Because that, that really is leaving too much up in the air. What happens if this house is significantly changed by the time the decision comes out and what's built is not consistent with the judge's decision? Now what do you do? If you go forward with this application and you grant this narrow um, just for the sunroom type request, then what do you do? What if what happens? What happens when you get the decision that says you can't enlarge the house? Well, now we got another variance that says you can. Do All we right, have to so appeal I, this? Oh, go ahead, Do we please, have to appeal please. this? And, can, and can finally, I, if I can just make one more point, Mr. Sure, Chairman. Bob. The reason we're here is the work was done beyond the scope of the existing zoning and building permits. And that's what's really going on here. This work was done. The, there was substantial uh, dismantling of this sunroom and reconstruction of it. Dave Keating went out and figured out that the ceiling and, and roof structure was higher than what was there before, stopped the job, and this variance application followed. There are provisions in your regulations in Section 1125 that allow you to decline to consider an application when there's an existing nonconformity that was done. and. Um, I'll read it to you. The zone, zoning That's board right. appeals. Uh, so, so there's two things here. So, understand. So, so, so we, so we, 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 have, we we're going to continue, continue this hearing. Yeah. Sorry. That's so okay. No, we're no. going to continue this hearing, and the, the, the applicant knows that they proceed at their own at their own detriment. Sure. Um, and I've never seen anywhere in the building code where the zoning enforcement officer gets to decide how you phase your project. That's true. So. That's true. They can lift it at the end, they can lift it at the beginning, they can lift it in the middle. That's that's their decision. Exactly. So, you know, I, 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 those those arguments don't carry a lot of weight. And, you know, if they want to proceed with this on the basis that they're proceeding, they're, they're more than entitled to. Then deny the variance is unnecessary. And we're going to continue it. Okay. okay. When's 130 <coughs> days uh, run? I don't know, because what happened here was we had the trial start. And you know how zoning trials go. You, you put on evidence of aggrievement and you go to oral argument. With Judge Tobin, if you've been in front of him, sometimes you do the argument first. We didn't get too far into the argument, but he did accept evidence of aggrievement and found aggrievement, but then sent the case back to the board twice. And we don't know if he's going to call us in to resume the oral argument based on the, the updated uh, return of record or the updated uh, decision. So it may not even have started yet. May not have even started. Have you guys done briefs on this? We did briefs to get to trial. Uh, but We've no, both no, filed no, motions no. for leave to file briefs in light of this recent uh, Supreme Court case. We haven't had a decision on it yet. My understanding, I, I think, and I don't want to get this wrong, but I'll risk it. I think Judge Tobin is beyond, uh, I think he's on senior status, and so he's not, he's not there every day. Okay. He's, he's limited in number of days that he, he can work. So. All right. <laughs>
there, I mean, there you are. <laughs> there, there we are. No, okay. so continuing it is probably a good yes, idea. Sir. Yeah, I would think so. I have a comment I want to make, but it's very reactionary, so I'm not going to make it. Okay. You can. You have 35 days okay. to close the hearing. You can extend that another uh, 70 or was it 65? I guess. Yeah, I believe the applicants aware of that. So. So, so 65 and 65. You can go out another 90. Yeah. 90 100. days from today. Okay. Uh, okay. Anybody All right. Else? He doesn't want to comment. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're good. Is it? Yeah, I'm getting there. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to? Make I, a I, I haven't made all my comments, but it's okay. We're getting, getting a little ahead of ourselves. No, I got uh, it. And a lot of it's speculation. Box. And so, I, I think so we need to find out what Judge Tobin's going to do. And once we find out what he's going to do, then we don't need to speculate any further. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Um, again, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to make comments to this application? I don't necessarily have to make comments, but I do have a letter that I can add to your file. I'm in full support. Sure, or if I could just give your name for yes, the record. Yes, my name is Fred Elliott. I live at 102 Rings End Road uh, in Darien. Uh, as the letter states, I, um, I row on Holly Pond. I know all about this house. Um, I applaud the sexes for continuing their efforts to improve upon their property in spite of the uh, obstacles that they've run into. Um, so I hope we can get this thing taken care of immediately and let them proceed, which apparently that's where we're going, that's where we're headed right now. So. Thank you very much. You we very appreciate much. your time. And anyone else in the audience like to make comments to this application? I'll take that as a no. Without any other, uh, without any further comment from the board or the audience, this hearing is con continued until we continue until next meeting of December the 18th, I believe. Would Correct. It? Okay. So continued until December the 18th. We await Judge Tobin's response. Okay. Thank you very much. You're very Thank welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Extra copy. What All right. Other business? So that's continued. Uh, yep. <laughs> Uh, let's see, where are we? Where are we? Is this, is this an opening? Let's go out of business. What do we got? What do, what do we got? Let's see, approval of minutes uh, on October the 16th. I was not here, so uh, um, everybody okay with the approval um, of the, um, excuse me, everybody okay with the minutes of October the 16th? 2019, yes? Yes, uh, I'll one. second. Uh, thank uh, you very I much. I was not here. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the okay. minutes, yes. Okay, right. you'll second. Okay, that's approved. Seconded, I'm sorry. Objected. Uh, all in favor? That was me. All in favor. Okay, uh, then we have a requested six month extension on the uh, Gallagher residence at 241 New Roten Avenue. Woody, is this their first extension? Uh, interestingly enough, for this. Application, yes. There actually what? was a prior application that expired. They ran out of time and they had to reapply. Let's talk about this one for a second. Um, Please. Yeah, I, normally I don't, you know, I'm in favor of extensions. And, uh, but, but this one here is a little different. This is not, if, I'm, if I remember the house on the road, this is the one that was abandoned, foreclosed, and now recently just had a huge, big wire fence just was put around it today or yesterday. Uh, and nothing's really happened until until then, and now we're being asked for a six a six month extension because why? I mean, I think I saw something about a wedding. A wedding? Did I see that? I mean, is that really a legitimate? But the plan is to start in November or something. Yeah, you know, it's, this is not a case where somebody wants to put a, 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 an addition on their home and the home is habitable. This is almost a blight. And nothing happened for six months because of a wedding. Uh, and now, you know, we're looking at another six months. Uh, and, you know, I, I, just, I just think that it's something to be considered. I'm not saying deny this. I'm saying maybe we keep it on a shorter leash uh, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and mm -hmm. watch it. Mm -hmm. And maybe give them a two month, 60 days and okay. see where they are and they come back again, et cetera. Uh, because I just don't think we should let a situation like that, an uninhabited house that's falling apart, continue on for another six months without a little bit more oversight. I agree with Mr. DeLuca 100%. And uh, to that end, other comments from the board? Love it. Agree. Okay. I'm going to move this to two months. What are you, two-month extensions? Somebody. Uh, so somebody um, 
Okay. All in favor? I'll, I'll make, you make the motion. You I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Second. All in favor? Who's voting? All seven of us? I don't know exactly. You can all vote on that. Yeah. So two months. Two months. Fine. Like it. Motion made. Second. Second. All in favor? Right. Five five zero seven zero or whatever. Okay. Two months on that one. Uh, requested amendment to the approved plans calendar: Douglas and Richmond Row, 102 Rings and Road. Okay. What? Um, Woody, tell me what this is about, please. Um, some of you are more familiar with this because you were involved with this project. Is this the is this that this is the house out at the end of the thing that we had we had to meet downstairs because there were so many people and all this stuff? Uh, yes, the right yeah. there. Yeah, and I'm, I know Becky Monroe. Yeah, of course it's it. Okay, I I just for the record, I did not participate in that hearing, um, but I was there because I had to pick up other hearings at the end of the night. In any event, so what, what, what's the issue? The uh, it's complicated. Oh. But, but was they made a bunch of they used cheap cedar yeah, shingles yeah. instead of asphalt. Yeah. Okay. And it raised the roof by two and a half inches. No, an inch and a half. <laughs> Believe it or not, we have a sample of what seems to have led to the difficulty. Oh my word! I mean, it's they planned the house with a certain height using asphalt shingles initially. When we were in the middle of a public hearing, they made a whole bunch of adjustments including switching to thicker cedar shingles. And that result is now they're two and a half inches too high with the final height from what they committed. So to clean this up, we're basically asking you to allow. It comes out to a tenth of a foot, <coughs> the way surveyors measure this, but because it's an average, there's actually a little more involved, and it can't be fixed by some grading around the bottom. So okay. the question is whether you would accept I think the number is 28.88 height instead of 27, 28.7. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough conversation. Thank you, Woody. Do okay. I hear a motion to approve? Yes. And do I have a second? Yes. Okay, all in favor? All in favor. I'm abstaining. Okay, okay, fine. Do I have five or four? There's six of us. I okay, fine. I got I got four. I have at least four, so that's fine. That's fine. Put on a, the, the cedar shingle. Okay, next. Uh, that's it. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. That's all we have. That's all we have. We yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank have you. a nice Thank evening. You. Okay. So, uh, so okay. Um, do I? Uh, hey, let me uh, point out something. We have a uh, very interesting town council. And I'm working with John Luzo. Our checklist has been updated some, and a whole lot of minimum adjustment necessary case law. I think what we should do is we're going to plan on another session here, which we're going to get updated and make sure that we're going to be sustained by the court. After the new year. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. After the new year. Well, that leads me to the co-chairs agree. Yeah. Woo, you know. Do you have anything else, Woody? That leads me to the other thing, or are you all good with it? Gathering? Did everybody see the email on December 11th? Oh, no. see the goose. I didn't see that. Oh. Everybody look at your calendars, please. Do we have to pay please? for it, or can Woody pick up the tab this year? I say Woody right. picks up the tab this year. All right. I'll send out an invite. December 11th. I'm in. I'm just going to write that at that point three two. <laughs> Chuck, are you even in town? You're never in town. You know what I said. It's interest. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I am in. All right. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Before we talk about the, our Christmas dinner, uh, do I have a motion <laughs> to? Yeah. yeah. Do we have a, uh, a motion to adjourn, please? Do I have a second? Second. Great. All in favor? Done. Okay. Channel 79. We're done. Thank you very much.